My name is Carter Terenzini. I am the town administrator here in Templeton. And the show uh, that uh, you're going to watch for the next hour or so is called, generally, Talk of the Town. My guest today is John Kaplis, who is chairman of our select board. Uh, and he is here to talk about what he and the board see as the, the state of the town. Uh, we do this annually to kind of deliver a message to you as to how the, the last year has gone and to set up the conversation that we'll be having over the coming few months in the run-up to the town meeting. So, Mr. Chairman, thank you very much for, for joining us. I think that the community would be very interested. Uh, uh, often the board will speak to what they see as the state of an issue, but this is kind of a little bit more of an overview. And How do you think it went? I think, uh, again, I'm, I'm John Kaplis. I am the Yacht Chairman of the Board of Selectmen. And to, to give you a, a, a preview of uh, the last year as far as where I see or where we see as the Board of Selectmen in the state of the town. I'm going to start with finance, uh, you know, capping a series of positive improvements in the town over Templeton's financial management and status. The town has received yet another positive recognition on turnaround of its finances when Moody's Investment Services, the major rating services for, um, for municipal government obligation bonds, gave the town a rating of an A1. Uh, to me, uh, I was celebrating. I was uh, in awe. I could not believe this. And to give a little feedback back, the, the town of Templeton had a bond rating back in 2012. Uh, it was a double A rating. Uh, we had no bond rating from 2013 till now. We finally, finally, finally get a bond rating uh, of, a, of an A1, uh, which is unbelievable. I, I, I could not be any more proud of the staff, the financial team, yourself, uh, the Board of Selectmen, other boards of committees, uh, the advisory committee, etc. Uh, this is a huge, huge accomplishment uh, for the community going forward. Um, <clears throat> with that Alpha One, with upcoming uh, you know, issues of the $12.25 million, uh, I, I think we can go into the, the percentage real quick if you don't mind. Sure. Uh, today, uh, so we have the uh, $27 million that's authorized on the school. Right. Uh, and another $2 million and change on the police station. Uh, the school project is running uh, under, under bid, mm -hmm. so we're not going to need that much. And we issued today, uh, or about to issue, about $12.5 million, roughly half mm -hmm. of what we need, uh, permanent bonding. And that came in at less than 3.5%. Exactly. Where on the fraction, we'll know a little bit later today. We have some work to do. Uh, but yes, John, uh, less than 3.5%. Uh, again, another huge accomplishment for all the, all the financial team and the services that are being out there. I mean, three point, under 3.5% uh, when we had, you know, folks that were really um, not on the same page that we were on, you know, step away the fact, that, you know, we wouldn't get to anything below 8% or 9%. But here, here we are. At 3.5 percent, just be, just below 3.5 percent for that 12 and a half million, uh, unbelievable. I mean, great job to everybody in the staff. Um, free cash right now is at about 1,572,732 as of 6:30, 2018, uh, from 1,042,588 as of 6:30, 2017. Uh, we do have about 107 uh, so I was hundred and seven thousands of dollars uh, in the capital stabilization Contri contributions to the to the OPEB is about three hundred and fifty thousand give or take, uh, and o o OPEX is around four sixty something along mm -hmm. those lines four hundred sixty thousands of dollars. Uh, I bring in those numbers because the town has never had this before. This has never been accomplished. That I that I went back to at least two thousand nine. These are multiples of what you had uh, when you came into office just, that's, yes. just a couple of years ago. That's correct. When I, uh, when I first came into office, I had a, a five-year plan. And I presented that five-year plan to, at the Camelot when we did the uh, can candidates night, which was a great time. And I, I gave up my five-year plan, and I specifically said, you don't need to be smarter than a fifth grader to know if you don't have the dollars, you can't have the services. So something has to give. Um, 
And I can tell you, with my five-year plan that I had in writing, we're two years ahead. Uh, we talked about the, having the, the meals tax. We talked about looking at every possible revenue place that we can get revenue. Every, every, every stone was unturned. Um, you know, thanks to everybody's help, the financial team, you know, Mr. Tanzini, the Board of Selectmen, uh, the assistance the advisory committee has provided to us, um, which goes a long way. Um, we, we didn't appropriate all the free cash uh, last year's. Uh, that money rolls over to this year's free cash, kind of like a savings account. You cannot touch the dollars uh, that have not been appropriated. Audits are being done and have been completed. So obviously all audits from 2013 to 2016 were done as of last year. Uh, our 2017 audit is, is done. It was done, yeah. Uh, and our 2018 audit is uh, being... Uh, That's uh, your 2018 audit was completed on time, and uh, the auditor will be in front of the select board this coming Wednesday, February 13, mm -hmm. to present you with the management uh, the management letter. Fantastic. But I mean, you're, you're on track. We, we are finally, um, after, after three years of hard work and dedication of the Board of Selectmen, the other committees and, and boards, the financial team, we're finally getting to be on track. Um, again, unprecedented. I mean, with the bond rating, the percentage rate uh, for, for the dollars that are, that, are, that are needed for the school, uh, it's unprecedented. I can't, uh, I, I can't say enough and I can't thank people enough. This is, when I tell you this is huge, uh, this is really big. This is as big as you can possibly get. This is as, as terrific as terrific can be for a town that has been kind of out of the net for since 2012. Um, I think this is going in the, in the right direction. Do you agree? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Uh, obviously, the current tax rate right now, which I think most of you folks know, is at $17.24. Uh, yes, it has gone up $0.52 cents from last year. Uh, there is a projection of, of things increasing, um, but again, we're trying to do our best with the financial team, Mr. Tanzini, the Department of Revenue, to obviously level things out so the impact on the community and the taxpayers aren't as abrupt and uh, aren't as shocking. Uh, because I, as a homeowner here in town myself, um, as a taxpaying resident, uh, you know, I mean, I'm in the same position uh, as everybody else, and I think that needs to be known. Uh, it's not just the other residents. It's not just, you know, it's everybody. We're all in the same village together, and we're all doing what we need to do in order to sustain, you know, this, this great community. Uh, we do have some ongoing projects. Uh, we have the new school project, which, again, is on time and under budget. Uh, the assistance that we're getting from our partners with the Narragansett Regional School District is phenomenal. Uh, the cooperation uh, that we get with them is, is, has been... Uh, unprecedented. I mean, it's, uh, this is all new. I mean, this is something that, you know, we brought to the table, the Board of Selectmen, along with Mr. T Mr. Tanzini. We specifically wanted our partners to be our partners. We wanted them to know that, you know, we care about them and I know they care about us. And I think that's being prevalent by the, the joint meetings and the joint success that we've had over the last year anyways. What do you think? I, I agree completely. This year's budget process, um, you know, we, there will be a challenge with the uh, amount of resources that are available to meet their needs, uh, but they held their budget meetings earlier. Uh, we were clued into as to what the schedule was uh, with the management fellow being able to attend, um, and you attended some, Julie Richard attended some, uh, but we were able to uh, have a window uh, into what their thinking was each step of the way uh, which we were then able to get written up and, and forwarded to the board. Right. So, um, as I say, uh, I, I do think we'll probably need to agree uh, that the numbers will be a challenge, but yes. the process itself was terrific. You couldn't have asked for uh, anything uh, better uh, from the district in, in response to our request. Fantastic. And again, that's a, that is a, another change uh, from the past. Uh, not, we are not living in the past. We are living in the future. And what's happening, not just what's happening today, but tomorrow, five years, ten years from now, and where Templeton will find itself in those time spans. Uh, and hopefully in a better place than it was, you know, three years ago, four years ago, when there was a question of a receivership back in the day. I mean, it, there was actually some talk. And here we are today with, with money in our coffers. We have money in OPEB. We have money in, in uh, the operation uh, and emergency fund. Uh, I mean, this is... 
this going forward is, is like I said, it's unprecedented and it's really uh, a great job and it contributes to all of the staff uh, that work in the town of Templeton to make all these things happen. Uh, it's fortunate for us at the, as a Board of Selectmen member to you know, make some of the decisions, but most of the work uh, where the rubber meets the road is the people that work for the town and uh, they are doing a tremendous, tremendous job. Uh, additionally, uh, the police station project is also on time. Uh, obviously, we, get a, a nice, we have an OPM. Uh, they're doing well. Uh, that seems to be on schedule as far as what I can it see. It is. Uh, and, and on budget, I would assume. Yeah, it is at this point. Okay. Yeah, we will uh, light a candle to make sure it stays there. That's right. Well, and, uh, and obviously, we're doing some other things here in the town as well uh, to help them with the police station. Obviously, there's some work that I've been doing with you know, the governor's office. Uh, in order to attract and, and obtain that some additional funding, and the public may not be a, a, aware of what that's that's all about. I know Senator Gobi will oh. be coming in to speak to you, so you might want to touch upon that for for a moment, just to let the public know what that's about. Okay. Well, basically, there's uh, there's funds that the state has available. That, uh, we're looking for about two hundred fifty thousand of dollars uh, for a portico and some other uh, outside work for the police station uh, that the governor has to be able to release. Uh, to the town uh, in order to utilize those funds. Now exactly the account that those funds are in is the... Um, it's the Economic Development Bond Bill. That's right. Uh, so that in itself, I mean, I, I, mean, I met with Governor, Governor Baker briefly at an opening ceremony in, uh, in, uh, at the Monty Tech School. I did have an opportunity to you know, talk to him directly. Uh, you know, obviously it's in an opening of a building, so I'm, I'm sure you know, he heard some of it, but I'm sure he didn't hear all of it. Uh, but I did have make multiple phone calls, and I, I have, uh, we have stressed to uh, Senator Gobi's office uh, the importance uh, of these monies that are going to help you know, this, uh, the police station. That will help us. Uh, as folks may know, there was a Sally Port planned for it. That's basically a protected area uh, where the police are able to take a, uh, a prisoner out of the backseat of the cruiser mm -hmm. and get them uh, weather protected inside the, the building. Uh, so uh, there were a few things that had to be cut out of the project. Uh, they just came in uh, overestimate when the bids were open. Right. Uh, so these uh, $250,000 would uh, let us uh, add those uh, features that are advisable, desirable, but uh, we don't necessarily need them to open the station. Right. It will function. Right. Uh, but this will provide us with a more complete upgrade uh, in today's best practices. So uh, the staff and I thank you for your efforts in reaching out to the governor on that to Absolutely. get them released. Well, you know, that's, that's well, obviously we, that's what we do. We try to all work together for the same commonality uh, of the town. Uh, the release for a proposal uh, for the Baldwin Elementary School went out on February 6th. Uh, approved by, approved be the Baldwin Elementary School Dis Disposition Advisory Committee after the public hearing on January 31st. Uh, that's another huge, huge thing for us is uh, make sure those RFPs go out, um, you know, for, you know, obviously the use of the, that building um, because, again, it's a, it is a town building and, you know, we don't like leaving town buildings unoccupied because that really does not help the town at all uh, insurance-wise. Uh, so having these RFPs and hopefully getting some things back that, that, that we have interest uh, in that building, uh, hopefully we can, that we can, you know, utilize those funds uh, for, for future growth uh, and, you know, in the town. And the, the committee was uh, seven members, planning board, uh, advisory committee, uh, neighborhood residents, uh, and they spent a number of months putting together the, the request for proposals, uh, which has, as you mentioned, gone out uh, on the central register mm -hmm. uh, and uh, our website, but more importantly, working with the development services staff, uh, we were able to identify about 30 uh, folks that we thought might be interested in a smaller scale redevelopment like this. Mm -hmm. Because you often end up putting as much effort into a, a 12 apartments as you do into 100 apartments, right. believe it or not. You, you still got to go to the planning board, you still got to go to the ZBA, you still got to go to the bank. Uh, so the uh, advisory committee has basically said, you know, any use that is conforming with zoning is, is acceptable in the area. Uh, I know that uh, with um, our veteran service officer, they were connected with veterans mm -hmm. entities. 
um, conversations about affordable housing. Um, so we, uh, if, if anyone out there has a friend, a neighbor, a relative, or uh, that someone that they think might be interested in small-scale redevelopment of that 1920-ish uh, mm. uh, neighborhood uh, school, uh, please reach out to us, let us know. The uh, RFP is up on the website. Uh, and we have the, um, there would be nothing that would be better mm. than on the day that you cut the ribbon to open the new school, you're also able to sit at a, a table like this and sign uh, the deed to uh, dispose of that building. That's correct. Um, so that we don't have to carry it on our insurance. Mm -hmm. It doesn't become a site for vandalism, graffiti, uh, and uh, hopefully we even we maybe even get a few dollars for it for the town's coffers. Oh, that would be that would be fantastic. And that's <clears throat> we can always hope and pray. Knock on wood. So hopefully that. Uh, and again, that that committee is doing a um, a fantastic job. With you know, with the with that request, um, they really put a lot of work and effort into it. They really did, and I was really really impressed uh, with that. Um, <clears throat> moving on, so we applied for uh, uh, community compact best practices on February fourth, and uh, efficiency and rec uh, regionalization grant to be shared fire services went out for uh, uh, state. Uh, what was that? February fifth. Uh, Philipson uh, also did their best practices as well. Uh, which they will be submitted uh, again, just to to see how that would work uh, practices, and how uh, how it, if it's even feasible to have a you know kind of a joint fire service between Templeton and Phillipston, um, and which will obviously save money. Uh, I would I would think in the long run. And uh, you know I I know some folks sometimes get nervous, so we're not necessarily talking about merging. We're not necessarily talking about regionalization. But we do want to take a holistic look at what elements of the fire service, if any, and none of it may prove feasible, right. uh, might be suitable for a sharing arrangement. There's uh, a couple communities um, in, in my area uh, that share a fire chief. Right. They have a single chief for the two departments, and each town pays a certain percentage. Uh, there's uh, other communities where they share you know, uh, other elements. Uh, where it's sort of been agreed that Community X would buy this kind of equipment, Community buy, Y buys that, uh, because they're side-by-side side and they didn't both need a $1.1 million ladder truck. Right. Uh, training. Uh, we're having a, a, a great uh, a training um, week after next. Right. Uh, bring someone in from the state. Uh, you know, could, could we join in that on, on a regular planned basis? Not just a one-off, mm -hmm. um, hey, we're doing this, would you like to come on over? Right. But on a regular basis, uh, administrative support. Um, right. You, you know, one admin to do things the way we, especially given that we share dispatch right. already, which right. they have uh, indicated they want to uh, re-up with Continue. us for a five-year, a new five-year agreement. Um, so we'll, we'll look at that. That would be paid for with the Community Compact Grant, as you mentioned. Uh, and that's the grant uh, that you first applied for uh, when you uh, got on board, uh, which gave us the financial management policies. That's right. Uh, that you worked on uh, with Collins Center. Uh, and our first look to see at our security uh, on our, um, our IT, our right. oh, information technology. Right. Uh, so yeah, that's that's going forward, and uh, we hope to hear in about forty-five days, basically by the that's end of, of March, April one. I can't I can't wait. I mean, that's that these grants really do help and impact uh, the studies that we really need in order to make rational, educated decisions on how we do move forward. Because uh, without those, then you know you're kind of blind, and you're making blind decisions without having the information. Right. Exactly. And you want that information. Um, <clears throat> Uh, there was a, an RFI being sent out next week uh, to prospect marijuana retailers, growers, processors, and alike. Uh, I think that's also going to be uh, something that this town needs to grasp. I think uh, that retail of that, we need, to, we need to jump on board. I think uh, the other, other communities are doing it. Uh, even Gardner's doing it right now. Uh, they're doing similar stuff that we're doing. Um, I, just to get the feel of the idea, you know, this is an agricultural community. 
why would we not have uh, you know something like that here, uh, where we can you know uh, reap the benefits and the financial benefits of that? Uh, that that is a huge industry, and I think that industry is not going away anytime soon. And I think the industry is probably gonna, most likely going to grow uh, in the future. So I think uh, you know having that foresight of sending these you know uh, sending these information out to the those retailers to see and let them know that hey Templeton is here and uh, Templeton's willing to accept and um, you know what do you how are we going to work together to make that happen well and I think we've talked about this you know since I've been here that uh, Templeton uh, without substantial new growth uh, really is in a situation uh, where it, it it needs substantial increases in state revenue, which although the governor um, has kept his pledge each and every year, uh, local aids increased mm -hmm. uh, uh, a couple of points. Uh, the Chapter 70 reimbursements have increased uh, a modest amount. More importantly, they've held everybody harmless, so they aren't reducing anything. Which is good. Uh, but absent um, a substantial increase in state aid, which we don't believe would happen at any time in the right. near future, uh, absent local growth, substantial local growth, uh, the town is unfortunately locked in this slash, oh dear, what do we do, slash, oh dear, what do we do. Um, so yeah, uh, the board's move to uh, authorize us to uh, send these letters out, which basically say to anyone we can identify, uh, if you are interested in growing, uh, processing, or retailing uh, cannabis products, uh, this community is open for business. Now, uh, this is a community that voted yes. for the referendum statewide, whatever anyone thinks. Right. Um, we would realize jobs and property taxes uh, if it's only a grower or a, a processor. If it's a retailer, though. If it's a retailer, the town last year at the annual town meeting, uh, when it adopted the meals tax, mm -hmm. also adopted a 3% tax uh, on the retail side of things. And although it, it will flatten out over time, I, I have to say that I was quite envious of my counterpart in, uh, you know, Leicester, mm -hmm. uh, when yeah. they were getting, a, a, you know, about $15,000 a week. Uh, in Northampton when they first opened, and that will flatten out over time. Uh, but there is, uh, were we to have a shop that had substantial uh, retail volumes, uh, there's a, a real opportunity there uh, for the community to realize uh, new revenues uh, to meet its ongoing operating budget needs. Absolutely, absolutely, which we, which we always need. We always need that. Um, <clears throat> Stony Bridge study is on time with uh, projected completion occurring shortly. Uh, do we have a do we have a date on that? Uh, we expect to receive that study uh, within the next uh, three or four weeks. Um, the timing of the whole event was unfortunate. Uh, happening in late August, uh, we were not able to get money until the fall town meeting. That's correct. Um, and uh, we used the state typical boilerplate that they provided to us under their culvert replacement program. Um, it, and so, you know, you're trying to do survey in the winter. You're trying to do soil borings in the winter. It's tough. Uh, it, it's tough. Uh, and the grant programs, the two that we're going for most immediately, um, are from mid-February to the end or so of, of March. So we're, uh, you know, trying to push them along a little bit right. uh, to get that done. Um, I don't know what the timing might be, uh, but we'll have to see. And these grant programs are extremely competitive. Right. Um, but we'll have that study, and when we have it, we will have a public meeting on it. We've been trying to have more and more of those. Yes. Um, but I would watch that space over the next four to six weeks, I would say. Okay. Well, I think that's uh, that's a... Uh you know, it, it, it's heading in the right direction, and, that, and that's what matters. It, everything is going in the right direction, which is forward. Uh, we are not going back in time, uh, and, and that's what Templeton needs to understand. We are, we are moving forward slowly but, but surely. Um, obviously, and even, even with you, uh, yeah, you're a part-time town administrator, but you are a town administrator. 
We do have a management fellow in place now, uh, Adam, who's doing a uh, fantastic job from what I can see. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, obviously the board's uh, still awaiting your, uh, your um, documentation on how his performance has been. I can't wait to see that probably in the next few weeks, I'm yep. assuming. Um, and I'm sure based on what we're seeing out of him, I think he's doing quite, quite well. He, he is. And, uh, you know, you, you compensate me for about 16 hours a week. Um, out of the I, 30 you work. <laughs> out of the 30 that I work. Well, you know, the balance are a, a donation for the cause. I, I don't right. have a problem with it. I'm here, you know, three days a week or so uh, this time of year the four because of budgets, budgets. and such. Uh, so we have the benefit of we're really getting about one and uh, a half, one and two thirds uh, for what you would have paid a, a full-time person. And I think that this combination as he evolves mm -hmm. uh, and he'll be coming up on a six month mark and we'll be doing that, that formal evaluation testing against those competencies that right. were established. Uh, the staff seems pleased, the board seems pleased so far. Um, and I, I think this is going to work out well, Great. Uh, such that next year, uh, when he reaches the one, the one year mark, uh, I would go down to j two days, and we would bring him up and pay and give him an assistant town administrator, uh, and then go another year. And, uh, he would then be ready, I think, to assume the role Full completely for a community such as this. Fantastic! I, I think that's the. I think that growth going forward, I think, is a, it's a good plan of action. And I think that, that's what the town needs to understand. We do have, you know, solid plans and actions going forward, and, and they are being executed, uh, you know, in a way that, you know, we have the ability to see the growth and see how things are happening. Uh, I think that's what's in, important to see. Uh, we do have some other new stuff coming into town. Uh, we, uh, we have a new fire truck coming to town. I don't think we've had a new fire truck in Templeton, I think, since the 60s, I believe. Uh, this one is replacing one that's I think 35 or 36 years old. Yeah, it's it's been a, it's been a while. It's been a while. Uh, our our capital assets, our rolling stock, uh, fire, police, highway, uh, they they all need attention. And obviously, there's not enough money to spread around. So we try to spread as much as we can, uh, when we can, you know, based on the on the need. And obviously, a fire truck is definitely a need here in the community, uh, and that is uh, being built as we speak. The uh, changes that the uh, board approached the town meeting for uh, and the town meeting approved in the makeup of the capital planning committee uh, really gave us the first effective capital committee in a number of years yes. last year. Uh, and then this year they were able to meet regularly with a quorum for each and every meeting. Uh, with free cash certified uh, for fiscal 17, mm -hmm. uh, we're able to do um, uh, close to three quarters of a million dollars uh, in capital uh, this spring. Uh, with the adoption of the meals tax, we were able to uh, lease that one ton in a new cruiser. Mm -hmm. uh, and then in three years when that's paid off, you'll be able to lease a new one ton and a cruiser right. and try to keep that on a cycle. Uh, and um, the capital committee for this coming year has proposed another half million or so, which we look like we're going to be able to handle. Okay. So having a plan and being able to finance that plan are critical. Uh, and that's critical controlling maintenance costs also. Mm -hmm. um, we spend much of our time um, with equipment down, right. out of service. Uh, one snowstorm here, the three snowstorms ago, we had several of our pieces of equipment that were down for almost a total combined total of a little over a hundred hours that, that's uh, um, and it's just it, it's very difficult but this has been a tremendous improvement uh, under Doug Morrison's uh, leadership this year was Mike Curry uh, Cheryl Richardson and um, uh, Adam Lamontane from right. our office and they did a fantastic job they, they prioritized things based you know on on the need uh, not based on what everybody wanted, because I mean the list was pretty big. And the list had, is pretty big, and they yep. had to narrow things down to the things that were that were absolutely uh, imperative to the the uh, the town's ability to move forward and the safety of the community. Um, so having a new fire truck coming in probably uh, in the next what seven eight months. Yeah, they, believe it or not, they take uh, close to a year. The um, uh, six wheeler that came in just this last fall mm -hmm. uh, was close to eight months. 
Uh, the one ton that we're expecting to get later this month, um, in whatever storm it is that we're hit with, hopefully we get it before that storm. Absolutely. Um, that took uh, eight months as well. And so, the, the, I'm sorry. No, so the that. highway get popping now has two new vehicles, is that correct? Yeah, oh, and wow. the guys wow. are... Can you imagine that? Two new vehicles it, on the highway it, 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 it's It's unbelievable what a morale boost that seemed to be for the guys. That's huge. Down there. That's huge. I mean, they were, they were working with... Uh, uh, makeshift vehicles. Well, you know, interestingly, <laughs> last year when we did that swap with Winchenden, um, I think the vehicle we got was the late 90s, 96, 99, something mm -hmm. like that. And one of the citizens inquired about why would we want a vehicle that old, uh, and somebody else kind of cracked the joke, but it wasn't that far from the truth that that vehicle was going to be one of the newer, newer vehicles, vehicles in the yeah. fleet. That's true. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so to get these two new vehicles, and then uh, we'll see what we can do capital next year, right. uh, is, is really, it, it, it lets us operate better. It reduces uh, the time spent on maintenance. It reduces time spent on cost. In the long run, it is really very critical now in, to our operation. In maintenance, I mean, did, I think I saw a, um, I don't know if it was been approved yet, but the lift for the mechanic as well? Yeah, coming up, uh, the glyph that we had, again, you know, something that's given us a, a great dollar value for what you spent on it. Mm -hmm. It's about 23000 to get these trucks up in the air so right. you can really work upon them. Right, because it makes uh, And that's, ground. that's on the list uh, as well for the capital for next year. Right, and I think that's huge. I think because that will definitely help the mechanic do his job uh, to hopefully get these vehicles, you know, repaired quicker, faster, more appropriate, and get them back on in service. Absolutely. Um, and again, I, I, that, I contribute that to uh, to that board, uh, you know, to Mr. Curry and his group, and, and Doug Morrison, and I think they're uh, they're doing a fantastic job. And I think, like you said, this is the first year that they've actually had a quorum. Uh, I mean, they met last year, but they never had a quorum last year. They, they, had, they had some meetings that were challenged. Uh, mm -hmm. Bob May was on it last year with Doug. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, in Cheryl, and uh, that went fairly well, but it's just been these last two uh, that they've been able to, you know, operate uh, out of the last six or so uh, right. that they've been able to operate uh, with a quorum. Wow, and that's 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 huge for us. Uh, the information that, and again, it's about the smart people that work for the community that provide the information to the board of selectmen for us to hopefully make decisions in the best interest of the community based on the information that's being provided. And I think we have really smart people out there, and they are giving us the best information possible for us to make the decisions uh, going forward. And that's why I think Templeton, so far in the last three years, you know, has been so successful. It has been moving forward in the right direction. And I think that, that you know, uh, you know, we talk about synergy, we talk about that, we talk about energy, we talk about you know compassion, we talk about working well together. You know, all those things matter at the all boards meetings that we do. Uh, once a year. Uh, the retreats that the Board of Selectmen do in order to collect their thoughts and processes going forward and what they see. All these things matter uh, moving forward and I think that's how you see Templeton moving forward. Um, you know, obviously we, we got the new infield groomer as yeah. well. Uh, Rex that, very attachment. happy with that. Um, worked out very well. I, Cost effective solution. It, it was. Uh, There'll I be mean, some money turned back to uh, uh, free cash. Uh, that was unexpended. Yep. And, and again, it's all about, you know, the smart people in the room doing their job. Uh, like Bill Belichick always says, just do your job. I mean, and they are. They're doing their job, and, they're, and they are smart people, and they're, they, they should be commended uh, for the work that they do, uh, and, and they do, and they are. Uh, by us, as the Board of Select Members, other boards of committees, you know, the uh, Mr. Tanzini is in his staff, in his office, um, and we're working all well together at this point. And uh, the vital siding, let's talk about that real quick. The vital siding. So the senior center, who, um, you know, it's, it's been an ongoing process. Uh, we had to go through town meeting not once but twice. Uh, we finally got the money for the, for the siding, and the siding is about 95% complete. Mm -hmm. uh, and if you went down to the, uh, the community center, you know, um, Council on Aging, uh, it, it's beautiful. It's a beautiful green color. It's, it's really nice. The trim is nice. Uh, it really looks inviting. Uh, it's a great looking, it's a really good looking building now. And, it, and again, it's one of our capital assets, uh, which again, all our capital assets help us 
you know, with our ratings uh, with Moody's and, and with our rates that we, the percentages that we get for the borrowers of dollars that we have to borrow. All that capital matters. And uh, any, any, any other thoughts on that? Uh, I mean, there's work continued to be done. It, it was done on a very a small budget, so that's going to be done in a number of, of iterations. Mm -hmm. Uh, little things that you find uh, when you've got any project you don't think of. Uh, so you put the brand new siding on and then the, the old vents are there and it's kind of like it, you see it right away. So they'll be uh, uh, treated and painted uh, the doors. Right. Um, uh, there's a, a, a detail at the roof line that the architect was out the other day, uh, Tuesday, mm -hmm. uh, to look at, to develop a, a solution to. but. Uh, the building will be weather tight. Uh, we'll be doing some uh, short-term roof repairs. Be looking at the parapet as well. Mm -hmm. uh, the project has just gone along fairly well, and I think that what helped the project go along smoothly once we had the bids and the monies uh, is we did keep the architect on, uh, and we used the uh, OPM owner's project manager. Mm -hmm. um, You'll hear that phrase a lot, and you'll wonder, what, what is that? Owner's project manager. Uh, the state law requires uh, that any project in excess of $1.5 million, we retain a professional whose sole purpose is to manage the project and keep everything on track. And this um, is the same OPM we're using for the police department? It is. It is. And we chose on the two smaller projects um, to retain them for them, so the uh, Templeton Common Fire Station yes. will be getting a new roof, gutters, downspouts, um, and uh, we just need the, the weather to cooperate so we've got to stretch long enough. Right. Um, but that's also been approved, so that, that, yeah. that new roof will be going on. Uh, uh, yeah, we should, possibly, we should. Uh, you know, um, uh, later this month, if not, certainly by Memorial Day, that'll be all done. So the town seeing, uh, I think, probably one of the larger investments uh, in rolling stock and its uh, capital assets, mm -hmm. its buildings, buildings. Uh, than it's been able to see. Because you went from 13, 14, 15, 16, you went five years. The last time you had free cash certified, if I remember correctly, was back in 12 or 13. It was 12. Uh, and it was actually a negative it was. at that time. Uh, so it was five years before you could get your free cash certified. Um, but now, as long as you get your audits done on time, and you have a plan with that financial management policy, That's right. setting some aside in those various reserves. That's right. Uh, you know, with the capital reserve going from 10000 when I got here three years ago to, I think you mentioned about 110000 or so. Something and like that, yeah. The, the operations, we refer to it as OPEX, OPEX yeah. operating expenses, uh, went from about 100000 when I, I came three years ago to, I think you're up around 450000 now yeah, or so. Yeah, 450000 460000 So a fourfold increase mm -hmm. in two years. Yep. Um, the new leaps won't be quite as impressive when you add a couple, <laughs> couple hundred thousand each year, but th those are still quite quite impressive, and uh, even on the OPEB, uh, other post-employment benefits, when we hire an employee, we essentially uh, make them two promises. While you are working for us, we will pay you X and provide you these benefits. Mm -hmm. And part of that is a retirement. And when you retire, we will continue your benefit, your post-employment benefit. That's correct. Uh, and the town this year, uh, this is a regulation, not a regulation, an accounting standard that's been out there for close to 15 years now that the town had not complied with until this year. And we had a firm come in and do a full evaluation of the town's liabilities. Yep. Um, and um, start to make payments into those accounts. You had started to set some money aside, uh, but those are coming up and uh, with additions each year. You'll be in much better shape on that. Uh, and that's an important part of your audit. It is. A and your credit rating. Yes. <coughs> yes. Because uh, the uh, uh, 
firms want to see what are your balances in the bank that you have restricted and cannot easily tap right. uh, as they look at your credit. And I think that shows, you know, based on, I think that shows, because obviously based on what Moody's gave to us as a, as a bond rating, I think that shows, and as far as what we're going to get as, a, as far as the percentage rate uh, for, the mar for the dollars, the 12 and a half mil, uh, at 3.5 percent. Yeah, again, we'll have the final numbers crunched over the next few days here, but we're... Uh, but it's not nine. It, it, it's not <laughs> nine, it's not five, it's not even four. Right. Uh, you know, the, uh, the raw number is under 3.5. And then there's, you have to do this and you have to do that. Right. And you have to apply the bond premium. Um, it, it, I've never quite understood that. It's kind of like when you went to the bank many moons ago and opened up a checking account, the bank gave you a toaster. Well, <laughs> when, when uh, we put out to bid our bonds, the banks pay us a premium. Here, we will pay you X numbers of dollars if you will borrow from us. Um, we use that to uh, pay the cost of issuance because mm -hmm. we have to pay the bond council and our financial advisor and Moody Services. That's correct. We have to pay all those people. And whatever's left, we apply against the bond to bring it down a little bit. So the final number would still be um, just an awesome interest rate yeah, number right. by comparison. I, um, I was uh, completely shocked. Uh, to see that, I mean, I was completely shocked to see, you know, to, to see or to hear about the bond rating the way it was, the way it came in. Um, it, it's, 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 you can't get any for the least at this point in time for this town. I don't think we could have gotten any better. G given the, the the challenges that the community has with a lack of economic growth, uh, that is what is posing the greatest challenge mm -hmm. right now. Is, You've got your accounting practices mended. You've got your audit practices mended. Uh, there's still more work to do. There's, yes. uh, every organization can always do better, and the staff recognizes that, and they're committed to doing better. Uh, the challenge is on that year-in, year-out operating expense. Right. Uh, and uh, you've made some, uh, some tough decisions. We increased the percentage that uh, retirees uh, had to pay towards their health insurance. We At uh, 35 percent. And again, these are, these are very hard decisions for us because they're going to impact they impact people. They're 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 tough. And you had a health a Medicare supplement program that yep. uh, paid for all the prescriptions, and you had to change that and uh, move to one which uses the the Medicare Part D program. Right. Um, and that actually went much smoother than folks had imagined. Um, I do want to touch upon a major capital project sure. uh, that the town has, has made some real progress on uh, in the last 12 months. Uh, Royalston Road mm -hmm. uh, is about a five, five and a quarter million dollar project uh, to be paid for with uh, Federal Highway uh, Administration monies. And we reached a very important benchmark uh, last month when we had the 25% design oh, public hearing right. with the uh, Mass Department of Transportation. Uh, and the timing was excellent. So that goes on the tip list, right? Well, uh, uh, another step to go yet. Okay, but, I, I, uh, the, I'm, I'm kind of rushing it. But the timing was, that, well, <laughs> you're not that far off because uh, they're actually working on the tip for 2024 right now. Okay. And we had the design hearing uh, in time such that we were able to say to them, do you think we could get a hearing to try to get on that tip list? And in fact, the hearings on February 20. Great. Uh, we'll be sending uh, Bob Sosick, uh, DPW director. We'll be sending someone from the engineering firm. Uh, we'll be letting the folks on Royalston Road know. Absolutely. Are um, we going to be sending letters out? We will. Okay. We will, uh, and that's, I, I think we had some good success this year, uh, just trying to increase those public meetings and public awareness uh, that the board has just been committed to trying to uh, improve the connectivity 
between the staff and the information that we produce and, right. and house and the citizenry who are interested in that information and impacted by the decisions. Especially if it's their street. Particularly if it's their street, right. absolutely. And Wilson Road is a well-traveled uh, road. Ab absolutely. So, you know, uh, in many communities there would simply be uh, a, a newspaper advertisement and, and maybe something on the town's website. Right. Uh, we're trying to uh, constantly improve Royalston Road, everybody that lived on the road or came off of a side road that would use Royalston Road uh, got a letter at their house about 10 days or so before the hearing. Right. Uh, something like that's not always possible, but we can make increased use of the improved code red system to do those neighborhood that's a good idea notices. Yeah. Uh, so Royalston Road, I think, is... Um, position to make the next move forward uh, and if we can get that on the tip then we can feel much better about investing the next tranche of of money right um, it's always this balance of give us a design and we'll move you down the list well we'd like to have some sense of how long we're going to be on the list before we spend too much money right because we don't want the plants collecting dust. Exactly. Um, and, then, and then we don't get on the tip list. And then you don't get on the tip list. Which we don't want that. Uh, or it sits on the shelf so long that some standards have changed. Right. And the first thing you end up doing... Doing it all over again. <laughs> yeah. Spending more money. Reflagging the wetlands or yep. your permit has expired. So it's always this very delicate balance. Right. And I, obviously, uh, I don't know if you have word on... Uh, just so that people know, in, at least in East Templeton, where we are today, uh, the projected you know rotary that's going to be going in uh, at the intersection of uh, North and South Main and the major roadway here. Uh, I know they've they've been talking some some talk about it uh, for some time now, and I'm hearing that next year potentially or the year after. That's that's what my understanding is for that roundabout. We'll try to keep people uh, posted. Uh, more immediate interest uh, in some more good news that I think came out of. Uh, 2018 uh, is the town uh, with its audits complete and up to date is once again eligible to apply for community development block grants. Fantastic! So we can uh, use uh, Mr. Uh, Ping Fang again. And uh, yeah, Michael's moved on to to another oh, uh, yes. uh, ent entity, mm -hmm. so you'll see a new face next week. Great! Uh, but the board, um, uh, I think, you know, the desire was to con try to concentrate on East Templeton, what's been waiting. Uh, in the wings as we, uh, you know, kind of got our house in order. Yes. Uh, and that hearing, if anyone sees it uh, and is able to attend, uh, is on February 13, uh, here at 6.30, maybe a little bit later because the delegation comes in and, and uh, gives you kind of an update on right. where things are and we get to ask them if they brought checks. Absolutely. Uh, you know, See how much deposit money in the treasury. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. Uh, but uh, with the audits in, in, in order and DOR happy with our financial position, that allowed the uh, Department of Housing and Community Development uh, to uh, say, give us the sign that, okay, yeah, you can start applying for money again. And those programs were so successful mm -hmm. down in Baldwinville. They were. Um, they were instrumental in, in Baldwin. They were, I mean, I, I can't tell you how successful they were and the utilization, and uh, making Baldwinville, the roads down there, uh, went, 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 it went very well, it went very well. The uh, town moderator, uh, you know, again, not specifically a, a select board, uh, but I think part of the thrust of the select board to get the staff and uh, officials to be more open in the process, have more hearings, they do take time, um, and, uh, you know, it does, sometimes we get very few people, uh, but the moderator did host a meeting here mm -hmm. uh, in this room. You were able to attend, Julie Richard. For a short time. Uh, anyway. Well, you know, when the, something happens to a child, you've got to go take care of that That's business. That's right. That's right. So I do apologize for a Because you're, you're running abruptly. a business business, of, you know, a family business, and then the public service business, and sometimes they do conflict, but uh, we thank you for the time you were able to. Spend us and, and he came up with some great ideas. Uh, and those are up on the website today, uh, news and announcements. 
Um, you can uh, see the notes of that meeting and a few things that are going to be pursued. Uh, there is a link to the video, the, thanks to the good work of uh, TCTV. Uh, there's a link embedded in that announcement so folks can just jump right to and watch that meeting that uh, Derek Hall held with, uh, with Carol Harris. Uh, and there's a, a email contact if people have questions about the meeting or having watched the, the video, uh, perhaps some suggestions we hadn't thought of. Uh, and the meeting was all about trying to um, get more people to the town meeting. Yeah, build attendance. To try to make the town meeting a little bit more efficient because it's, it's a great colonial tradition and everyone needs to have their view heard and considered. Mm -hmm. But there are also a lot of people who come to the meeting and they just want to do the business and, and, leave. and, and, and go home. Right. So how you balance that out, the, you know, the people's right to be heard and to debate, and make sure everybody makes, uh, has all the information with those who perhaps have been tracking things all along and they know they want to come in and, and cast their vote. Right. Uh, so Derek's uh, did, held this meeting to try to get some ideas on, on that as well. Is that online? Uh, that is online, and if you click on our news and announcements on our website, the link to the Temple Ten Community TV mm -hmm. um, YouTube take you right to that YouTube video, and you'll be able to watch that. Great. I mean, obviously, there's a, we're trying to put as much as we can online, so that people can see the work that that is done here, the work that we do collectively. Um, there is two new policies that were just put in today. Uh, one was the Board of Selectmen policies and procedures. Those were those were revamped to reflect uh, uh, today's statutes, some things that were out of place, and also to kind of uh, reflect the way that this board wants to do business. Mm -hmm. um, and then the second one's important as well. It was. It was the uh, the website. Well, was. the remote control. Right. Uh, the the website, yes, we worked on that last we night. We did, yeah, but there was the yeah. uh, remote r remote participation. Uh, participation. Yeah. Uh, again, we had a verbal type of thing, but there was no real policy, and it wasn't systemic. So, like the other boards or committees, you know, you know, I don't know if they could or couldn't use it, but now there's a policy about it. And it covers all the boards and committees, and it has been vetted against the uh, latest guidance from the Secretary of State. And, and that's that's the challenging thing. You know, we had a request. Uh, the other day for something and uh, someone in the office asked me what to do and I said well you do this this and this and then all of a sudden I'm like well wait a minute they changed that long last session right so hold out quick time out um, and they changed something the way it had to be done um, because you know you try to stay up on top of everything right. uh, but there's 140 of them in the legislature and only one of us out here. <laughs> right. It's kind of hard to keep track of it's, how the movie is Yeah, it, it is. It is. Uh, it is. And I, I'll tell you, I mean, as far as I'm concerned, uh, you know, being the chairman of the Board of Selectmen, which has been an honor for me, uh, and I'm humbled to be here uh, to help and guide and uh, make decisions in the best interest of this community and, uh, and all the staff that, that do and does work for the community. I, I, I can't, my hat's off to all of them. Uh, they really do a tremendous job. And, I really think that um, you know going forward in the future, I think Templeton is uh, is a shining star. Well, there's two years left of your five-year plan. You don't necessarily have to make this your last talk of the town. Uh, no, no I, I don't have to, but uh, <laughs> due to due to other issues that I'm having, unfortunately, it's, it's this will probably be my my last talk of the town, and um, and obviously to you know let the let the viewers know and understand. Obviously, my term is up in May, uh, and I am not running. Uh, for a second term, uh, not because I don't want to be there or I don't want to do the job. I think the job is important and it's imperative. Uh, but also my health, uh, which has been impacted, uh, not so much by this job, but by, by me getting older. <laughs> uh, and also uh, my family. I, uh, I, have a, I have a small child at home uh, that depends and demands a lot of my time. Um, and that takes uh, a lot of my time away. And I want to be able to focus you know, on what I need to focus on, which in this case would be the town business, uh, which I've been lacking because I've been focused on, you know, other things. And I don't think it's fair to the people, and, it, and it's definitely not, you know, not fair to the, to the town and the employees if I'm not, you know, giving it my 100%. And unfortunately, that's where I'm sitting right now.
But this does give us an opportunity to let folks out there know that while it, it can be a, uh, a consuming job, it can be a thankless job in many occasions. It can also, I hope they see from the pride you've taken in what this board's uh, accomplished, be a rewarding job. Yep. I was, I, I've, been, I've been blessed. I mean, we've worked hard uh, to get to where we are today. This just wasn't easy, and we're not done yet. I mean, just because even if I, if I don't run again in May, which I'm not, but if I, it doesn't stop there. The next person has to pick up the, the baton and has to move forward. Uh, and, and put the town in a better position. I mean, the way I, I used to use my life and how I go forward is, you know, I like to, you know, leave it better than I left, it, you know, than I got it. You know what I mean? I mean, so if I, yeah, I, I'm, I've always been that way. So I mean, I can honestly sit here and say that, you know, yeah, me leaving is is is, is not a happy day for me, um, but I know in my heart and, and in my head that, you know, I'm leaving Templeton uh, in a better place than it was when I got it three years ago. Uh, I know that for a fact. So if folks out there are interested in running for uh, one of the several select board seats that will uh, be available at the uh, annual town election in May, those nomination papers will be available uh, towards the end of, of February. The town clerk will be making an announcement. I hope you can see that there is a great deal of uh, self-satisfaction and reward in that. Uh, and um, uh, I'm hopeful that, uh, you know, in the last few months, um, you know, this will continue to be a, a great partnership between the staff and, and the select board. And uh, for those who are wondering uh, a little more, tell us more about where we're headed in the spring. Well, we're going to release the budget uh, with a presentation uh, here in this room, uh, uh, the meeting room at uh, Town Hall on February 27. Right. Um, then uh, we'll be having budget sessions, reviews with the department heads throughout May. We'll be building um, a web page that just puts all the documents out there. And throughout that budget process, uh, we encourage you to attend the hearings if you can, view them. If that's the way you get your information, read it on the uh, web. Um, and important, send us your questions, your comments, your suggestions, uh, and we'll do our very best to get you an answer as quickly as we can. Uh, so, John, uh, I just want to thank you for the, the, the work you've done on behalf of the community uh, as you approach the end of your three-year term and um, wish you the best, but we still, have, we still have work to do between now and May. We sure do, and I'm, I'm sticking with it, and I'll, I'll be here uh, and give you my whatever I can give you. Well, thank you very much. <laughs> thank you for watching us. I hope this has been informative.